All right, welcome. I'm going to cover some Firebase auth. I'm going to walk you through how to do some simple auth with Firebase. And, you know, it's not something that I implement very often, so I'm actually going to rely a bit on the docs and on some notes that I've already taken to make sure that I get it right, hopefully the first time. Um, I tend to make a fair number of mistakes when doing auth. It's kind of a, I guess, in check sort of business. So I've started off here with a little Polymer form. This is mostly just... This is just basic polymer. Um, ignore the polymer. This isn't the important part of the form. The important part is I've got I've got my Firebase initialized right here. I've got a little form that's polymer, and then I've got the functions that are going to get called by polymer. So, what do you see here? I can click sign in. It'll say, "Hey, sign in the user, register, register the user, sign in with Google, sign out." So all these things are getting called, and they're getting called with the right data. That's all set up. This is this is the dumb part of the, the exercise. Okay, let's do the fun stuff. Firebase auth. Okay. So we go to the auth tab right here. We'll see whatever users we may have loaded up. So in this case, I've got a user, quiver at, Chris at quiver.is. I've got an email and password. He's registered for email and password. He's also registered for Google login. I'm going to delete this account so we can start fresh. Okay. All right, those are users. Okay, sign in method. You need to enable the methods that you want. Email password, that's pretty simple to enable. Um, Google is also very simple. You just enable it or disable it, and you can, I mean, you can walk through whatever steps you need here. Um, you can do, Google acts very similar to Facebook, Twitter, GitHub. I don't use anonymous very often. don't really recommend it. Um, there are other ways of maintaining session information. Uh, but you can use an anonymous auth if you want to. Okay. Add domains. So I'm going to work off a of local host. So I've added local host already. You just add the domain that you want. Um, and of course, it comes default with your, your hosted app address. And I added some other baloney down here. Okay. So local host. That should already be there. Okay. Once that's set up, you're good to go. Let's go back to the users tab. Okay. Let's register our user first. So to register a user, uh, you only have to really register with uh, email and password. Ah, oh, scratch this. You know what? Let's do sign in with Google. It's so easy to sign in with Google. Okay, sign in with Google. Google sign in. Ready for this? Provider. You get to pull the provider down. Okay. You can add scopes if you want to. So I can say, hey, I want to add the Google Plus login. There's a whole bunch of scopes. And I believe they are here. Yeah, so you can add all these scopes. Um, I think it comes naturally with the email passwords, with a, the regular email scope. But let's make sure we've got it. Like the email and profile. There we go. Profile and email. So we're going to add, let's say, just whatever, that one. You can, and a lot of these are long URLs, but profile, email. This is Google Plus login. I don't even know. I don't, I don't need it, but ah, whatever. I'll get rid of it. Okay. You can add some scopes. Not always necessary, but hey, if you want to do some fun stuff with your user, you can get those scopes. Okay. Let's get rid of the scopes. Okay. And then down here, it's literally this. And guess what? I like to copy paste this just right out of the docs. There's no reason to type it like ever. You only need it once per app. Okay, so Firebase, you call the auth SDK from Firebase, firebase.auth. Sign in with pop-up provider. You've got your provider up here. Then results. Gives you an access token you can use to access the Google API. A token, great. You know what? I don't need that token. All I want is a little error handler. Great. And all I'm going to do is just console.log out. Google, Google, 
Google sign in error. Error. Great. I don't need all this baloney. Uh, yeah, credentials, whatever. I don't need it. Whoa. That was precipitous. Okay. Now. Okay. We want to listen. Okay. This, this is done. This sign in with Google here. I just did it. But we are going to want to listen to changes in auth state. So this will just log us in. And I'm not going to, I'm going to ignore the, the initial then callback for the sign in with pop-up. Instead, I'm going to handle this purely off of um, a listener. Now this is auth state changed. You pass in a callback. It'll get your user your user object. So I'm gonna say app dot user equals user. This will add it to my my Polymer app. And then I'm gonna console dot log out the user. Okay. So let's just make sure this works. Reload my page. Get all my fresh stuff. Secure token. Huh. Weird. Okay, sign with Google. Blah, 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 blah. It's going to do it. I've already approved it on this app before, so it just went through. So the initial call on the onslaught state change, the user was empty because there's no user. Now I've got this great user with all this data, refresh token and blah, 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 blah. Okay, display name, email, great. There's some provider data. So I can... Yeah, this is not, not difficult to understand. Okay. Now app dot user that should have my user now because I attached it over here to my Polymer, my Polymer app. Uh, I believe I could do app dot user dot get token. Now that returns a promise that token dot then function console dot log. Token, and let's add token in here. Okay, ready for that? That's my token. I can use this token now to make REST calls to the REST API or do any do secure operations as this user. I can pass this token down to my server if I need to, um, so the server can act as my user. This is my this is my logged in token. Now. Just wanted to quickly note because this is I didn't find this to be super easy to find the documentation. It's app.user or the user from your on off state changed. Uh, dot get token that returns a promise that will return you the token. So that's the key. I just wanted to make sure that was clear. You want to get this token? That's how you do it. I actually never use these tokens. They're they're useful for some server side operations, but they're really pretty rare. Okay. Now check this out. Now if I reload the page. The user is already set. I'm already logged in. So this this listener uh, actually keep, kept track of my login state in local storage in my browser. So I can I can navigate away, can navigate back, can reload all I want, and auth state hasn't changed. So let's sign out. Okay, no sign out yet. Ready for this? This is let's see if I can remember this cold. Firebase .auth .sign out. I believe that's what it is. Ready? Sign out. Ah, the user went null. Okay. So now I refresh the page. The user's null. Sign in with Google. I've already approved it, so it's just going to roll through the pop up. I'm in. Okay, great. Now, let's register a user. I uh, haven't done anything yet for that. So, firebase.auth. Oh, gosh. I know how to type, I promise. Okay. Password authentication. Come on, internets. We'll twiddle thumbs. We'll twiddle thumbs. Come on, friends. There we go. Okay. Let's copy that out. Register user. Yeah, again, I only need to catch it. I don't need to do anything with the dot then callback. I could get the user and the callback reply. 
I've got I've got it handled already down here on on off state changed. Okay, email password that matches. So I'm passing an email password. Handle errors here again. This is a little much. Sol.log register error error. Okay, great. All right. Oh, let's show the user that I got. Hey, look, got a user. It's Google user. Okay, great. So now let's refresh the page. You'll see I'm still logged in here with my Google user. So I'm going to click register now with just these saved credentials I've got. Bam. Hey, the email address is already in use by another account. Check it out. I've already got one here. Now, if I were to get, delete this, it would register me correctly, but it's already in use. So what have I got to do? I've got to do what's called account linking. It's not super complicated, but let's just hop over here to link multiple auth providers. All right. So it's a little trickier to get um, credentials for Google sign-in or Facebook login, but since I'm just getting an email password credential, I can take the email. Okay. Well, first, ha. Huh. Before we get too excited, if error.code equals auth email already in use. Okay. You see that right over here? That's just the code for the error. So if that's the case, if the email's already in use, we will copy over there. We're going to get the credential. Okay. That is ugly. Okay. Auth. Let's see. This is not quite that. This is actually Firebase.auth. Yeah. That's not the best little bit of documentation right there. But it's firebase.auth.currentuser. Um, dot link passing the credential, and then we will um, successfully or fail there. Okay, and let's see how that works. Refresh the page. Okay, I'm still logged in here with Google, so I'm going to go click um, register. Great, I'll make already in use by another account. Obviously I've got something going on here. Auth email already in use. Oh, poor guy didn't get my save. Try it again. Oh, I'm a dork. Why'd I do that? <laughs> Uh, I did it in the wrong place. All right. There. I really want it here. There. All right. There we go. In the registration right here, register. There we go. Could not read property credential of undefined. Oh, there is a bug in the auth. I ran into this earlier in the auth. In the docs, it's email auth provider, not email password auth provider. So I got a little ahead of myself there. Let's try this. Oh, cannot read property. Link of undefined. Let's try this one more time. Firebase.auth.user. Current user. Nope. How about look at that? So I looked at the docs, actually got a couple of mistakes. That's actually not Firebase.auth, it's Firebase.auth as a function dot current user. Okay. Let's try this one more time. All right, trying it again, register in, 
Bam, bam, account linking error, requires recent login. Okay, you're gonna see this. Um, what this is telling you is that you need to actually log in with Google like immediately before you uh, do the account linking because it's a sensitive operation. So the trick here, if I were being more sophisticated, I'd actually do a pop-up and say, would you like to link these accounts? Um, and I'd offer them an, op an option to then click a different button to then link with the Google account. It would log them in with Google and then it would do the linking. But in this case, I know I only have two providers right now, just the Google and the user. Obviously, if it's already in use and I want to link it, um, I want to just automatically go straight, straight to log it with Google. So how do I do this? This here is first, I'm going to just use the app dot sign in with Google function, but it needs to return a promise. So this returns a promise. That's great. So I could just call right here before I do the link app dot sign in with Google dot then and check this out. All I gotta do, I run the sign in. So sign in is fresh enough. I mean, it should be seconds, seconds old, and then it will run the link immediately afterwards. Okay, register, bam, register. Oh, uh, it's gonna pop the Google sign in. There it went. Okay, account linking success. That's great. Now hop over here, refresh. Oh, unknown errors. I don't need you. This is still early days for this feature. Seems like there's some maybe some bugs in it. There we go. Got an email, password, and Google all attached to the same user ID. You can use this user ID throughout your app now. Um, every time the user logs in, they get the same UID. Okay. Now let's sign out. There we go. We're empty. Now we need to uh, sign in, currently doesn't do anything. So let's do a quick sign in. Uh, Password authentication, let's hop back there again. Sign in with email and password. Ready for this? Bam. Firebase auth, sign in with email password. Email password matches my it is up there, and I hate doing one-line catches. So I'm just gonna hop that down, get rid of some white space. Okay. Yeah, I'm logged out, I signed out already. I'm gonna sign in with this user, and bam, I'm in. Okay. Now I think there's a bug. Let's see if this works if I now sign in with Google in addition. There, now I'm signing with Google, sign out, sign in with Google, sign in here again, awesome. I try to register, uh, I haven't really handled this. It, yeah, account provider already linked. So you'd wanna handle this, I'm not gonna go through that right now, but clearly that, if you try to link a second time, you're gonna get auth provider already linked. That's an error to handle. Um, yeah, so auth's pretty straightforward. This is one of the easier systems to use. I mean, I've never seen such an easy auth system. And if you've ever written auth yourself, you'll understand how big of a game changer this is to just have auth you can use. Even if I weren't gonna use Firebase for anything else, I'd still use it for auth. And of course, Firebase auth is kind of necessary because you need to lock into your Firebase security rules so yeah, this is just about all you need to know. Everything else, of course, is covered in these fantastic docs. Um, but the hardest part was linking multiple auth providers. We got that done. Um, we're good. Okay, I'll be back in a bit. Thanks for listening.